happens and waits until you have to get out. And this private researching group did the last 10 years research on certain days, on certain hours, especially on the winter changement, uh, on the um, uh, equinoxial lines and everything, and they definitely have the approval that those towers were archaeoastronomical towers. This is one inside photo. And one of the towers has a small, uh, like a small window on top. And only on certain day of the year, the sun puts, uh, presents uh, the bull's head on the center of the Nurage. And the bull's head was a northern star before the great flood, or let's say pre-Diluvian, around 10 to 12,000 years ago. The age dating of those towers officially is about two to 3,000 years. But this group and many other persons believe that they are much, much older, that they are pre-Diluvian time, uh, older than 10,000 years. And how can you make a dating on stone buildings? If you find a ceramic, you can date it because it's organic material. But who tells us if there were not thousands of years later people just using those nuragas for living or for overnight or for protection of uh, heavy rain or something like this. So it doesn't say if you find in an old stone monument an artifact that this artifact is exactly the age of the piece you found. Here you have the drawing of the biggest nurage and here on this side you have small, uh, uh, small windows. They are that deep and they are very small. So even for protection, how can you protect your enemies if you have to bow down? You only can hit him with an arrow mainly in his feet. That means it wouldn't help a lot. And this group found out that exactly on the equinoxial t terms, the sun, uh, uh, the sun rise comes in here and goes out here. And if they followed this in about 500 meters, you have another nurage, another 500 meters, another. So uh, they are all connected. And I already informed them if they might be able to do some research with high-tech insight, because I think that also these nuragas produce a kind of sign, a sound or energy. And another strange story is that like the legions of the giants, which we find also all over the world, every uh, country, every tribe worldwide has the legions about the giants. And in uh, Sardinia, there is the legion of the giants, and they find, and there are many, many of very big stone graves, and they all have the form of the bull's head. And they say, so old people, I met some very old gentlemen there, and they said that when they were young, uh, Italian archaeologists excavated giants with over three meters and they took the bones with them. But if you ask anybody officially, giants in Sardinia never existed. They built also very, uh, in very hard stone, they built rooms going back from first to second to third, even to the fourth room with sm very small entrances. And this is the picture of a so-called giant grave. It's very big and on the left side and right side you have the form of the horns and on the back side the head of the bull. Very interesting also that they found even giant graves under the sea level. That means from a time where the sea was much deeper than in our days. This is a picture, a photo from Bimini. From Bimini, they found very big hand-worked stones, a lot of them, 
and as Edgar Casey said, around Bimini they might find a pyramid from Atlantis. This one and the next photo was done by a Russian research uh, ship. They found um, pyramid form constructions in 700 meter deepness. And now we are going to Yonaguni. Yonaguni is the southest island in Japan. And Professor Masa Masaaki Kimura is doing researches since 1985. And the first what they found through a, a professional diver was a very big monument you have here, the drawing, how it looks. And until now, Professor Kimura has problems of the acceptance of this stone monument done by human because the official archaeologists say it is natural. But, and he said, why it is natural? They said because the stairs are too big for normal humans, so that couldn't be uh, made by human for human. But again, we have even in Japan the stories of giants. Maybe the people at those time were much taller than in our time. Here you have several pictures, like this one in the center. It looks like a head. He calls it the Japanese uh, Sphinx. But here you can see the huge uh, work of a turtle. And there is a second one there of a big eagle or a very big bird. I mean, the nature makes many things, but I do not think that the nature can do a pyramid, uh, can do a turtle and a big eagle. And a few, few months ago, Professor Kimura informed me that he even found a stadium with seat rows and stairs going up. I know that the nature can do a lot, but not a stadium like the Colosseum in Rome. Here you see how big and how perfect done is this monument. And most of all, if it's natural and the stone broke, was broken down here, where are the stones? There are no stones uh, close to this monument. Here, everybody of you know already the Piri Reis map. Here you see how perfect it was. And that's the so-called world stone map. We found it in the year 2000 in a private collection with other 350 pieces which do not have any connection to any existing, existing or known South American culture. This stone and the other artifacts were found in the year 1984 by engineer Sotomayor uh, while he was in charge for gold digging for a British mining company. He found a tunnel system and in there were those 350 pieces. This stone is about 350 kilos uh, in weight. It's granite and it has a natural quartz line, which you see here, but all the other things are encarved. And for example, it starts here on this side. You can see that there is an eye inlay. This is the area of approximately Israel or the Near East. From here, you can see Italy, Greek, the quartz line, the natural quartz line goes over the Mediterranean, enters here into the Atlantic Ocean, and here you have one continent which does not exist in our days, and I think this shows Atlantis. Then it enters into South America, and here is another, this is the Bay of Guayaquil in our days. And here you have another inlay and another one going up. And here is a circle inlay. And that's exactly the place where all those pieces were found. Uh, this is also the place where we found the best water which exists on our earth, earth because it has an energy, natural energy, up 
to 1.5 million Pauvi. Pauvi was a French researcher. And the strongest water in Europe is the well of Fatima, which has 640,000 Pauvi. But this water in Ecuador has 1.5 million Pauvi. And it has silver and gold colloidal in nanomicroscopical form. So that means the silver and gold colloidal can go directly into the human cell. Uh, there are many legions that uh, the kings were searching the water of life. And even we had some translations of uh, Sumerian uh, plates. And the, the translation was the gods were searching the water with gold. And we, I asked myself many times why here, around this area where the Sumera were living, you have an inlay of an eye and then showing exactly the place where this water is. And there is another continent here on this map here that's next to Asia. That's from the northeast Japanese island down further than Taiwan. And Professor Kimura told me, and he wrote also a book about the sunken continent Mu, that he thinks, because of his research, that from the northeast island of uh, Japan, now Russia, until far under Taiwan, there once existed a long continent. And you have it here. And that means that this stone map should be at least older than 10,000 years. But then the big question, how could somebody make such a perfect map already 10,000 or more years before our time? This is a close-up. You can see here Iraq, Saudi Arabia, the Mediterranean, and the eye inlay, the long continent here, and this eye. And here again, the line coming down here, and the inlay where the pieces were found here where the circle is. Uh, this is the so-called pyramid with the shining eye. Even Jim used it for his new bestseller. So it means it is a very, very famous, but also very, very old symbol. And this is the only existing, really, pyramid with the eye. It has exactly 13 steps, like the pyramid on the one US dollar. And very strange, our exhibition where I showed this uh, pyramid in original in Vienna, the opening was on 21st of June 2001. And this crop circle appeared in Eastfield in England on the 21st of June 2001. And the next circle, the pyramid with the eye, was showing on 21st of July 2002 in Bacon Hill. It's the pyramid with the eye and the 30 three lines, 33, 7, 9, 13. Always in my research, I find these numbers. The strange thing with this one and other artifacts found in Ecuador, that if you put black light on it, the eye shines really very, very strong. And the natural color is kind of light green and gray. And the most impressive for me was that on the bottom of the pyramid, you have here in gold inlays the Orion constellation and an unknown writing. This unknown writing we found on stones all over the world, in Ecuador, in Colombia, in Illinois, in Glossel, France, in Calabria, Italy, in Turkmenistan, in Malta, and Rex Gilroy, Gilroy has some pictures on his uh, website, and I found out that some of the stones he shows with unknown writing presents the same writing. That means there must have existed a global civilization long, long time ago. And there was only one man 
Able to translate this language, Professor Kurt Schildmann, he was the president of the German Linguistic Association. He spoke and wrote more than